Some say Chinese is one of the most difficult languages in the world, and learning it is almost impossible. So learning Chinese, the most difficult thing. Very, 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 So I'm sort of tone deaf. I can't really hear them. I think the cultural mindset is the biggest complication for the us. grammar. It's just complicated so much. Only because you're not learning it in the right way. Why not try Take Away Chinese, where you can take some Chinese away and experience progress day by day. Take away Chinese. We will promise you a difference. Welcome to Take Away Chinese. I'm Yan Hongin with Georgia Massad for this show. Hello, Georgia. Hello, everyone. It's always great to be here. It's always a pleasure having you for this show. Recently, I uh, thought of uh, something I want to check with you because I had another podcast and we talked about mm -hmm. an interesting scenario that yoga is in the gym all the time. So if you go to the gym and have classes, you would have classes like uh, cycling, um, classes mm -hmm. like dancing, different kinds of dancing moves and also yoga. But I realized that there is seldom a kind of Chinese martial art combo that that is being taught in a gym. So I was wondering, do you know any Chinese style exercising or any kind of Chinese Kung Fu related exercising moves? Oh, well, there's actually a lot right now. Martial arts in uh, general are getting extreme. Uh, they are since many, many years, but they're getting uh, extremely popular. So it's pretty normal, I would say, to see Kung Fu academies that also teach uh, Qigong and some other ways of doing martial arts that come from Kung Fu. But I would say that are many. Recently, a friend actually, like a couple of days ago, enrolled in a Kung Fu class. Uh, she's been thinking about it for so long and she loved it and she had a great time. I'm actually thinking myself about enrolling. I'm not that agile. This is what's blocking me. So I don't know if I'm a good fit. But it looked great because uh, she told me how it's both a mental and a physical practice that you have to walk and go upon. So it's really a path. It's not just a sport because I do indoor cycling and it's more a sport because, because it has no philosophy behind. So it's a mere sport uh, compared to Gong Fu and some other martial arts. Actually, there are some certain stereotypes linked to Kung Fu masters. You have the idea of these people being able to basically flying on top of trees or able to break walls with their bare fists. And this is one direction of the stereotypes. And there's another direction. I think even for Chinese people, we have this image in the back of our mind that for the relatively elder generations, they would have this really slow moves when they exercise and they are normally and commonly in a park and they are wearing this really long white suit when it comes to Kung Fu. We have these really weird but uh, kind of common stereotypes about Kung Fu. But the fact yeah. is that there are are many different sets of moves, combos that are really suitable for everyday exercising. And I'm happy to say that nowadays, these kinds of sets, these kinds of moves like Ba Duan Jin or Wu Qin Xi, we'll explain a bit later in today's show, are getting popularity among people, especially young people here in China. And I was hoping after today's show, those of you who are listening, who are in interested to cultivate both your body and your mind with the Chinese Kung Fu style would be able to learn a little bit about these moves as well. So for our dear listeners, if you're interested in Chinese culture and you want to get a grip on the Chinese language, then this is the show for you. Stick with us for 30 minutes and you soon see the rewards. And for more fun Chinese learning, follow our Facebook page, Learn Chinese, to watch many fun videos and live streams. But now, let's provide you with some free Chinese for takeaway. <music> 不是,这叫八段锦,是一套健身功法。练习它有什么好处吗? 
，主要是能促进气血循环，强身健体，所以我几乎每天都练。有这么神奇吗？要不你也教教我吧？你在跳舞吗？不是，这叫八段锦，是一套健身功法。练习它有什么？好处吗？主要是能促进气血循环，强身健体，所以我几乎每天都练。有这么神奇吗？要不你也教教我吧。And that's the conversation. I'm actually not surprised to see this person misunderstanding certain moves as a way of dancing because they can be, you know, quite beautiful and elegant and moving all parts of your body, and that's yeah, a little bit like dancing. Yeah, I think it can be mistaken, and if I'm not wrong,、uh, since there are many martial arts that originate from、uh, Kung Fu, actually some other taken from other cultures actually become dances, and I think they can be mistaken. They're so elegant and so in tune with your body, in with their body that it can look more like a dance than an actual <laughs>、uh, yes. fighting scene. Yeah, sometimes, sure. So let's take a look at the sentences first、let's、for the yes for the first one. You 在跳跳舞吗 ？Are you dancing? 嗯，你 ？You 在？呃、uh, ，to be doing? Yes， 跳舞。呃、uh, ，to dance? To dance? 吗？吗 ？To ask a question at the end of the sentence? Yes. So 跳 carries the meaning of jump. Actually, 舞 itself would be dancing. But again, we talked about Chinese language prefers two syllable words. So 跳舞 the formal way or the more proper way of saying to dance or dancing. 不是，这叫八段锦，是一套健身功法。No, this is called Ba Duan Jin. It's a set of Qigong exercises. Yes, 不是。No, it's not. No, it's not. 这 this this 叫 It's called to be named.、嗯、yes, Ba Duan Jin. Ba Duan Jin. Well, I'd like to talk a little bit about Ba Duan Jin. It's a form of Chinese Qi Gong used as exercise, and as it's suggested, there are eight different sections. It's kind of like eight parts, and you can follow it and you can practice it. And the idea about Ba Duan Jin is that the major muscles and bones in your body would be benefited from this set of exercise. So Ba Duan Jin. 是一套一套。呃、uh, ，it's a set。嗯哼，健身。A fitness， 呃，气功。Yes， 呃、uh, ，健身 means to exercise。健 carries the meaning of health or make something healthier， and 身身体 is your body。So 健身 ，the word means to make your body healthier。It means to exercise and has something to do with fitness。功法。Fitness exercises.、Mm. Yes, I think that is a right translation. But we talked about Kung Fu earlier. Remember, in a previous episode of Takeaway Chinese, and Kung carries the meaning of putting in the effort, whereas、mm-hmm. Fa carries the meaning of a method. So Kung Fa is like a set of way and something that you can follow. You can put in your effort. The way to put your effort in the practicing of something. Kung Fa. So, 嗯哼，健身功法 would be a way to exercise. 嗯、mm-hmm. 哼 ，it looks like very precise and not something that you're doing out of nowhere. Yes, definitely. 练习它有什么好处吗 ？What are the benefits of practicing it? 嗯、mm-hmm. ，练习 to practice to practice 它 it. 嗯、mm-hmm. 哼，有。Uh, there are. There are, or literally have, 什么 which, or what. Uh、mm-hmm. huh. 好处 benefits. Benefits. How to say、um, disadvantages or something bad. 好处 is it 别处<laughs> 坏处坏处坏处坏 means bad. That's why I specifically said bad. Yes. So if you say pros and cons in Chinese, you can say 优点缺点 That's advantages and disadvantages. But you can also say 好处坏处 something good or bad about it.、Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Chu carries the meaning of a place, of a something that you can pinpoint. So, 好处 would be the things that you can pinpoint that are good, that are beneficial. Whereas 坏处 is like the places that are bad.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's the idea. Ma is the signal suggesting this is a question, and then. 主要是能促进气血循环，强身健体，所以我几乎每天都练。It mainly promotes the circulation of the vital energy and blood, and strengthens also the body. So I practice almost every day. Yes,、uh, this is relatively complicated. Let's break it down word by word because、mm-hmm. it carries not only some language points, but also the kind of mentality and ideas and beliefs in traditional Chinese, let's say, medicine, as well as cultivating your body. So it's a bit complicated. But starting with 主要 the most important thing. Yes, 主 carries the meaning of the main thing, and 要 means the key part. So, 主要 if you're talking about something 主要 then it's the main, the primary part of something. So, 他是主要成员 He is the key role in this project or something. That's、mm. 主要是 It is 能 can 嗯、mm-hmm, 哼促进 to promote to promote both characters carry the meaning of to promote. 促 is kind of like to help someone. Better or further, getting into the moves, or as Jin is to push them a little further. So both characters carry the meaning of to promote, to push, to help. 气血循环 So the qi is the vital energy that goes through your body and the blood. Yes, I think qi people are quite familiar with the qi idea. If you are a Chinese culture enthusiast, and it is the energy in itself, the character itself means air, because we know you cannot touch or smell air. It's Everywhere, yet it's intangible, or at least it's invisible, and it's the same idea in your body. You would have this energy in your body that is everywhere, that is moving, that is basically providing you with the vital energy you need to move around. Yet you cannot feel it, you cannot grasp it, and that's the Chinese idea of qi. And qi is often related with xue. Xue Ye, that's the blood, but it's not the Western medical kind of blood precisely. For example, in the traditional Chinese medicine kind of context, if we say someone is qi xue liang xu, so both qi and xue are in a deficiency, it's not necessarily because you have a blood deficiency. It's more like the energy, the overall、um, very important. Element of energy and strength in your body is not、mm-hmm. enough, and you need to find a way to put in some supplement or to help your body generate more of the energy. It's very interesting to see them together because qi, as you mentioned, is something that you can't see. Well, the blood it keeps us alive, but it it circulates at the same time, so it's more visible. And it's nice to see them together in this way,、uh, yes. cooperating together. Yes, I think the key here is to realize that even though xue is related to blood, and definitely it has everything to do with blood, it's not exactly the actual blood. Idea that we refer to in the Western medicine system—it's a little more than just that. And、uh, 循环循环 circulation circulation. Both 循 and 环 carries the meaning of go in a circle circulation. 强身健体 So it improves the health and the body. Yes, actually, 强身健体 is a set phrase. 强 carries the meaning of strengthen, make something stronger. 身体 both 身体 means body, and、mm-hmm. 健健康 healthier. So basically, making your body stronger and healthier. And this is. A rhetorical structure that you can see a lot in the Chinese language. When we have four characters, and you feel like the first one and the third one are adjectives or verbs, whereas the second one and the fourth one are now feeling like they are the recipient of the verbs or the adjectives. Actually, they're rhetorical. So you should move the first one.
one and third one together and move the、mm-hmm. fourth one and the second one together, and that forms a better structure. It will help you understand the words better. Mm-hmm. Yes, but the together they make really sense. <laughs> yes, uh, so, so for this reason, hmm, I, I, almost, 每天 every day, 都呃、uh, to characterize with every day, so it's a way of saying every. Hmm, 练 uh, exercise, practice, exercise or practice, and 几乎 here is a very interesting word because you see it quite often. It means nearly or. Almost, it is used to emphasize that someone or something is very close to doing something. So let's try to use 几乎 to come up with a sentence, shall we? We can say things like a subject plus 几乎 plus a predicate. So Dad's hair is almost all white. How to say that in Chinese? Baba de tofa. 几乎都白了 Perfect. So, 爸爸 is daddy. 头发、yes. hair 几乎 almost 都白了 all white. Literally like that. And you can also say things like they spend almost all of their money on this trip. 呃、uh, ，这次旅行。Perfect. That's how you use 几乎几乎 almost. No, it's a very、almost. useful word. Yes. Can I say something like this question has almost no answer? So 这个问题几乎没有答案 Yes, you can say that. Perfectly、mm-hmm. right.、Mm-hmm. It's very very used. Okay. And then 有这么神奇吗？要不你也教教我吧 So is that amazing? Why don't you teach me? Yes, actually, 有这么神奇吗 It's more like, isn't that just amazing? So we have 有 meaning there is to be. Uh huh. 这么 Uh, that. Uh、mm-hmm. huh. 神奇神奇 magic amazing 吗 Uh, to uh show that is a question. Yes. So this is really magical. Is it really that magical? So you're basically, it's not exactly a question in my understanding. It's more like you are putting an emphasis on the fact that you do not believe how magical it is.、Mm. So you're using a sentence to show that meaning. And 要不 Why don't you? Why don't you? Or how about、mm. 你呃、uh, you 也 also 教 Uh, to teach, 教教 uh, to teach. <laughs> yes, actually, to this is in maybe a more casual way. Exactly, 我 teach me. Uh、mm-hmm. huh. But it's suggestion.、Uh, yes, exactly. Uh huh. So, um, have you ever heard of 要不 before? Uh, 要不 I think I've heard it when I was watching movies where the two characters are discussing where to. Let's go. Uh, maybe it's pretty late. So someone would ask.、Uh, Gemma Yuan, 要不我开车送你去、mm, so、？Perfect. Why, it's so late. Why don't I bring you home? Yes, perfect. Actually, even though if you take a look at both characters, 要 means to do something or want something, whereas 不 means to not to. So you would someone might think 要不 How about I don't do this? Is it to do or not to do?、Uh, it's very confusing. But that's the thing with the Chinese language. Sometimes we use a negative kind of expression to show positive meaning. So even 要不 sounds like Like, how about we don't do this? Actually, it means how about we do do this? <laughs> like you said, it's more casual. So if even if the answer is no, there is no problem. Exactly. And、uh, for example, you can say things like, "This week I'm busy. 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 I'm How about we meet up next week? Exactly. See, that's a casual way of saying how about we do something. And that is the conversation.、Uh, do you have any other questions? Yes, about Jiao Jiao and how is it a、um, a very casual way of、uh, saying we've seen it、uh, before? And could I only say Jiao Wo? You can totally say that. Yes. Okay.、Mm-hmm. So Jiao Jiao, like you said, is a way to soften the tone to make it a little bit casual. And Chinese people really enjoy two syllable words, which is why sometimes when the word is only with one syllable, we kind of like to repeat it just to make the sound of it a little bit better. That happens as well. Yes, seeing it like this, it it's more happy than just Jiao. Yes, yes, a little bit like that, making the tone and the context a little bit lighter. All right, in that case, let's try the conversation, shall we? Let's do this. 
呃，你在跳舞吗？不是，这叫八段锦，是一套健身功法。练气跳有什么好处吗？主要是能促进气血循环，强身健体，所以我几乎每天都练。有这么神奇吗？要不你也教教我吧。Perfect. You're listening to Takeaway Chinese with myself, Niu Hongling, and Georgia. We would love to hear from you. Send us your thoughts by email to learnchinese@ciri.com.cn. Coming up next, let's talk about some Chinese ways of exercising. Don't go away, so you will take some Chinese away. Welcome back to Takeaway Chinese. I'm Niu Hongling, joined by Georgia. First things first, I need to talk about Ba Duan Jin a little more because it is、mm-hmm. kind of like the key word and the key exercise we mentioned in the dialogue. And actually, Ba Duan Jin, literally translated as eight pieces of brocade, the name of the form generally refers to how the eight individual movements of the form characterize and impart a silken quality like that of a piece of brocade to the body and its energy. And that's the reason behind the name. And Ba Duan Jin is something that my mom actually enjoys a lot. She would practice it twice every day. I think once in the morning and once in the afternoon. And it's her way of energizing her body. She told me that every day. If she practices Ba Duan Jin regularly, like she does routinely, almost she will feel that she's slowly waking up her body, and energy would be filled with her body, and she would be able to do her things. And if she does not do it, she will feel like she's tired and without the proper energy she needs. So yes, my mom's a fan of Ba Duan Jin, definitely. I think it's also the best way to start your day with. Uh, to have some exercise in your body, but also have this mental awareness of what you're doing, and I think it's actually the best way to start your day. And I'm getting really interested. Do, do you practice badminton as well? I cannot do it as well as my mom, <laughs> but definitely you can find some videos on different platforms about badminton, and you can practice following the videos. That can be a good way. But I have to say that you should definitely find some good ones, the ones、mm-hmm. that will tell you what to look out for, to what degree should your arm stretch. To what degree should your body bend? Those are also very important element when it comes to Chinese Kung Fu. Because in Chinese we say 差之毫厘，失之千里 Basically meaning that a tiny little difference, a minor mistake, would lead to horrific. Problems and results. That's the thing when it comes to kung fu, because it feels like you're only doing I don't know a sixty degree angle instead of a forty five degree one, but actually it means the world of a difference. I think that in martial arts in general, the posture and little details are it's what's most important. I have practiced a little martial arts, and we had some sequences we need to do,、mm. and. A little difference, maybe because we're, you're distracted or you're thinking about something else, makes a difference, and it's not the same thing to your body. So it's important also to have a master following you or try to be. As present as possible. Exactly, that's another thing. Like you said, very important thing is to be at present as possible because you need to think about the moves you're doing and very mindfully practice the. All of the moves and the combos, because you feel like you know the moves already, you do not have to pay attention. But that actually is wrong, especially for Chinese kung fu. If you are doing it, you should make sure you don't think about other things, because the efficiency, the benefit it can bring to your body, can be totally different. Exactly, I totally agree. And in the meantime, another Chinese practice I'd like to introduce is Wu Qin Xi. Wu Qin Xi. Yes, Wu Qin Xi literally means five animal exercises. It is a set of exercises inspired by the movements of five animals, and it has been practiced in China for I don't know one thousand eight hundred years. Or even more, and practitioners need to mimic the animals, such as the powerful fighting gestures of tigers, the stretching and running gestures of deer, the slow motion of 
bears, the jumping and climbing gestures of apes, and the flying gestures of birds. So you basically pick the most just. Distinctive and beneficial movements or characters of one animal, and you mimic. That is, I feel like traditional Chinese people's way of learning from the nature and learning from the best. I think that this must be so nice to see, and it's really interesting how it takes many different animals, not just the classical powerful ones such、mm. as tiger, but also, for example, birds, and trying to put all of these different ways of living into yourself and take the flying. The fighting gestures and bring it inside yourself somehow, and respecting also the the animals by mimicking them. Yes, that's part of a Chinese philosophy, in my understanding. We know human beings are 万物灵长万物 ten thousand kinds of creatures 灵长 We are the smartest. We、mm -hmm. understand the world. We transform the world in the way that we would prefer. Yes, of course. Human beings are very smart, but in the meantime, because you're thinking too much, because you're changing too much, you lose that vital connection with the nature. You cannot really sense the surroundings the way animals do, and that is why, for Chinese philosophers,、uh, especially the Kung Fu masters, they believe we should, when it comes to maintaining your body to its highest and、uh, healthiest state, it's important. Important to find the connection with the nature. Better get back to the original set.、Uh, we talked about little kids starting martial art training at a very young、mm -hmm. age in previous episode, and that is the idea. You are not terminated by the world, by the society, by too much thinking, too much thought just yet.、Mm -hmm. It's the same with animals. We learn from the animals, and like Georgia has just said, learn not only from one type of animal but all kinds of animals, and that is how human being get. Back to the ancient, best natural state, and that can be very beneficial to one's health as well. Yes, absolutely. And I think that we live in mostly in big cities, so we've lost this connection with、uh, animals. But sometimes, even seeing a little bird fly,、uh, we don't realize how magical it is and how、uh, smart. This animal is, and we position ourselves in a higher space, in a higher level. How、mm. you said, but it's really important to learn from animals because we've been doing that for a long time. Yes, and I think when we are practicing martial arts, practicing wu qin xi or ba duan jin, learning all these ancient moves, it's nice to also think about the fact that for Chinese people. Ancient ones or modern ones, we do not believe that we're superior than any other species or any other nations or any other civilizations. We all have our strength, have our shortcomings, and it's nice to be able to appreciate diversity and learn from the best and learn from each other. Absolutely. And that brings us to the end of today's takeaway Chinese. I'm Neil Holin, and thank you so much, Georgia, for joining the show. Thank you so much. It was such an interesting topic. For more episode of the show, you can visit our website at radio.cgtn.com and go to the column podcast. You can also listen to the show and read the script there. Find us wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Just search for "Take Away Chinese." Don't forget to leave your questions, comments, and ratings. A five star rating would help me a lot. Thank you very much. 感谢收听，我们下次再见。再见。